Testament, you're a dunce, you are. Well, you're not much of a scholar yourself if you can't spell will, are you? Just want to be sure, that's all. This is a legal document. Don't want no slip-ups. Yeah, well, I've got to go. Now, look, there's a bit of cheese out there you can have for your lunch if you can bring yourself to cut a sandwich. Don't bother. Don't matter. I won't be needing lunch, not where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's out there if you want it. Now, I don't suppose I shall be back till late, so if you go out before I come home, leave your light on. I don't want to come home to a dark house. Turn it on now as you go out. What's wrong with you? You can turn it on later. I won't be here later. Made my decision. Don't want anyone interfering try to stop me. I know you won't be here later. That's why I'm asking you, turn it on before you go. Don't worry about the lights. I'll turn them all on. Oh, God, you are a strange man. What's the matter with you? Just the all light will do. I mean, you're annoyed, aren't you? Because I'm... Taking this job. Annoyed me? Just because you took a job? Why would you imagine I would be annoyed? You'd rather cook than clean for strangers. People don't know you. Don't care nothing for you. If you've got no feeling for those that mean most, that are closest, I mean, I've got no claim, I know that. I mean nothing, I know that. I'm only the person who thought that sounding a bit more than friendship might be growing, but I expected too much, I suppose. And I can't speak. I know that. I mustn't say what I feel. Man with a, only one good hip, I mustn't speak my feelings. <laughs> you are stupid. I mean, I've been offered good money to cook and clean for that couple down the street. Why can't they cook and clean for themselves? Nothing wrong with them. They're young and fit and healthy. Yeah, because they have to go out to work all day. And they can afford to have someone come in and do for them. And besides, I can do with the money. You could have earned money. You could have gone to the council and said you, you wanted to earn money looking after me. I'm entitled. I used to have a social worker. No. It was your wife who was entitled to a social worker. God rest her soul, not you. Look, Winston... Well, they took Winston away. Yes, because somebody grasped. No, they discovered that your wife, God rest her soul, had died. And you wasn't entitled to a social worker. That's all it was. How do they expect me to get around with artificial lip, eh? Oh, same as anyone else who's got one. You're lucky to have artificial lip. Lucky? Yeah, there's queues waiting for them. There's queues waiting for all sorts of operations. I wouldn't call them lucky. Oh, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. You, If you'd have wanted, you could have gone to the council and said you wanted a job as a social worker looking after me and they might have paid you money. I've, I've already got the wheelchair out there. That was given to your wife, God rest her soul, not you. She left it to me, God rest her soul. It wasn't her wheelchair to leave, God rest her soul. That was the council's wheelchair. Oh, I suppose you're going to tell them now. You're going to grass on me, are you? No, it's none of my business. I'm glad you admit that. Oh, if you want to be the receiver of stolen goods, well, I mean, that's, that's on your conscience, because it's not on mine. You hypocrite! Who takes that bleating wheelchair up the shops and brings her shopping back in it? And who rides in it, eh? <laughs> who rides in it when I'm daft enough to push it just because you make out that your corns are playing you up and you can't walk another step because your feet are killing you, eh? Eh? And, 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 and threatens not to be able to cook my dinner for me if I don't push you in it, eh? <laughs> and who used to go to football in it till he was caught? <laughs> And now wants me to go down the council and tell him a pack of lies about him not being fit enough to look after himself and I should be his social worker and wait on him hand and foot if I was daft enough to do it. If they was daft enough to believe a cock and bull story like that. Look. Look, you don't think they'd employ one old age pensioner to look after another old age pensioner, do you? And anyway, if they did and they paid me, which they'd have to, because I wouldn't do it for nothing, it wouldn't be cash money, would it? And that's what that young couple down the street are paying me, cash in hand. No questions asked, as you're always saying. And you call me hypocrite? No, I didn't call you hypocrite. You called me hypocrite. I don't know how you had the bare face to front of me to set foot in that church of yours on a Sunday. I do not know. 
I mean, I only hope, I only hope you don't put none of that cash money in the plate when it comes round, involving the Lord in your illegal transactions. No, oh, I'm <laughs> sure the good Lord would see no great harm in a poor old age pensioner managing to keep a few hard-earned shillings out of the grasping hands of Mrs Thatcher and her Protestant government. And anyway, he could, he could always pay the tax on it if he wanted to. Anyway, I'm late and I don't want to be. Now, the bread and cheese is out there if you want it. Don't worry about me, my dear. I've got my own solution here. <laughs> Have you got enough aspirin, sir? Enough for what I need. Well, what you got? Headache? Hangover? Hangover! <laughs> Where would I find enough money to afford hangover? You don't understand, woman, do you? What I've got is in here. I ache in here. It's indigestion. <laughs> you eat too fast, I'm always telling you. I leave no. all my worldly goods to anything here you want? I want this stuff, my worldly goods when I'm gone, anything you want. this stuff out. My stuff's much better than this. You're, you're not selling my furniture. Sell it? You don't imagine anyone would buy this, do you? I mean, it is so shabby. I, I've tried cleaning it, but the dirt seems to be ground into it. I think we'll have to pay someone to take it. I mean, the, the dustman might, if we give him a drink. Lord, that's got memories attached to it, that furniture has. Memories? Got more than memories attached to it. It's probably running alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, look, dust of ages. Oh. Well, don't look at me. You're supposed to be the woman in the house. Yeah, well, not in this part of the house, yet. And look at this table. It's not fit to eat off. Not fit for anything. Firewood, that's all it's fit for. Lord, that, nothing wrong with that table. It's clean. There's no dust on that. You eat your dinner off that table without a plate. Yeah, it looks like somebody has. No, get rid of it. Let's get rid of all of it. And bring my stuff down here. I want my own furniture. But my stuff's much better. It's more comfortable. It's cleaner. And, and it's your husband's. Well, what's that got to do with it? He's gone. Yes, and so will I be soon. But until I am, I'm not sitting in his chair and I'm not laying in his bed. No, and I'm not laying in your bed. Nobody's I'm asking you no, to. No, and I'm not cleaning your furniture and tidying up down here for you. You can sit in your dust. That's not my dust. <laughs> there's no dust on me. Look, there's no dust on me. Well, if it's not your dust, whose dust is it then? Come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? You want dust? I'll show you dust. Hey, listen, I've cleaned up there. I'll find dust for you. Let go, let go, you fool. Listen, if it's, you want to find dust, you don't have to search. <laughs> let you over here. All right. All right, I'll dust the sideboard. There you are. Oh, I'll put the flags out. See? Dusted. Now, I'll dust the lampshade. <laughs> See? Listen, if you're going to dust, use a clue. <laughs> dusted. If you say so. If I say so, nothing to do with if I say so. In half an hour, that dust will be back on it again. But not my dust. Not all for me. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Here, yeah. more dust. Is that my dust? I ain't been in this room since Pelly left. That's thick dust. That's Pelly's dust. No, you can't blame Pelly. He, he took his dust with him. I made him clean this room thorough before he left it. Besides, Pelly's been gone for months. See? And look. Here, yeah. not Pelly, because that dust is the same colour as our dust. <laughs> Look, here, more dust. 
I invented that today. Yeah, I've been eating for months. <laughs> Thick dust. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Clear that dust out of there. Be back again in half an hour, thicker than ever. Yeah, it's cool. So, well, if you don't use it. No, it don't matter. All your cleaning and dusting, oh, it don't matter. All your rubbing and scrubbing, it don't matter. The dust, it hovers in the air. You turn your back and boom, boom, it's back again, thicker than ever. Well, I'm always polishing and cleaning. My poor else, God rest her, she was always polishing and cleaning. Almost wore her arms out, she did, rubbing and scrubbing. What for? Hey, the dust is still there. More, if anything. We have to do it regular. No, you spend your life doing it regular. Never get rid of it. And do you know for why? Because it's us. That's what the dust is. Us. Well, where does it come from? I don't know. But it seems to me that every house is built... It's built with a certain amount of dust in it. <laughs> and no matter how much you rub and scrub, you'll never get rid of it. It's in the air we breathe. And if it's not in your lungs, it's on the furniture. And the only way to control it... <laughs> ..is to damp it down. <laughs> Sprinkle water on it. Yeah, I wouldn't spring water on this sofa, it could turn to mud. You'd be slipping off it. <laughs> Don't raise the dust oh. by banging on the furniture. Let it lay. Let it lay or it'll choke you. Oh. Let it be. Look look at this room. Look at it, what you've done now. You've filled it full of bloody dust. It'll be hours before that settles again. Oh, I'm going to work. Oh, yes, that's it. Leave me with a room full of dust. Leave me to choke to death. <laughs> oh, yes. You'll do things for others, won't you, eh? Yes. You cook and clean for them. Yes. For me, I don't matter, do I? Will you be sorry? I told you. <laughs> I don't want you going out to work. Yes, well, never mind. I forbid it. <laughs> well, it, it don't matter. Do you hear me? Well, I should think all those street can hear you. Listen, don't forget, put the whole light on if you go out later. <laughs> Turn it on yourself. been dying. <laughs> she left me to die. I can't see why you're so put out, Alf. I mean, with Mrs. Ollenbury working, there must be more money coming into the house. And if there is, Alf, I'm not seeing any of it. I mean, it must be a bit more for groceries and that sort of thing. It may be, but she don't come in and say, here, I was a bit more for a drink or a bit of tobacco. Not that I take it, Alf. I've no. got me prize, you know. Listen, I'm not getting... Hot lunches now, you know, nothing like that. If I'm not up early enough in the morning before she leaves the house, I don't even get a cooked breakfast. I mean, she's hardly going the right way about getting me to marry her, is she? I thought you two were getting on well. We could do, Arthur. Could do. If only she showed a bit more thought and consideration of it. I am the man in the house. I keep telling her that. I'm the one who wears the trousers. But she seems to take me for granted. Seems to think I'll always be there. Well. She might have a bit of a shock coming to her. She might come home one day and find something a bit more than she's bargained for. I'll tell you something, Arthur. The more I see of life and the way people treat you, the alternative starts to look a lot better. I don't mind telling you. What, dying? Heaven and all that, you mean? Or hell. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't be much worse living there than it is here. At least you wouldn't have any fuel bills to worry about. You wouldn't have to worry about hypothermia, either. <laughs> warm enough down there. <laughs> Bloody sight warmer. Try to live in my house on one bar of electric, I tell you. And better looked after, too, probably. Yeah. The devil might be an evil old bastard, but I bet he looks after his own. <laughs> Which is more than can be said for some supposed to be loved ones we have to put up with. God, oh, blimey. I've got no worries about, you know, where I'm going. Well, Although I say it myself, I think I've done enough down here to guarantee a decent place up there with the Lord. 
If heaven's half as good as they say it is, and according to your churches, it's going to be the longest and best holiday you've ever had, why are you so unhappy about going up there, Mr Garnet? Not unhappy. I, I want to go up there. Yeah, but in your own time, eh? You're in no hurry, are you? Not just you. Everybody's the same. The slightest illness, the slightest risk, you might pop your clogs, you rush to the doctors. Oh, cure me, cure me, I don't want to die. Government, spending millions on a national health service, trying to keep everyone alive so they can stay here forever. You know what, if I was God, I'd say, oh, right, you don't want to come up here to my heaven. This wonderful paradise I've built for you. You're not keen, you prefer it where you are. Well, sod you then, you can go to hell! <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we all like to hang on down here till the last minute, don't we? Yeah, I mean, that's spare the loved ones, isn't it? I mean, the, the sorrow of your departure. I mean, we'll meet them all again when we go up there. What, everyone who's ever died? Oh, they'll all be up there. Be a bit crowded, wouldn't it? A big place, heaven. <laughs> what, bigger than England? Oh, much bigger, yeah. Can you imagine space? Yeah. No, I mean the whole infinity of space. Yeah. What's that mean, infinity? <laughs> well, think of the biggest thing that you can think of. Infinity is a billion, billion times bigger than that. Only bigger. <laughs> yeah. Where are you starting from? <laughs> Anywhere. And heaven's bigger than that? Yeah. Well, might not be so crowded up there then. Mm. Ah, except on a Saturday when everyone's going shopping. <laughs> Bloody football hooligans on the way to your West Ham, scratching my car with the front door keys. Wait for 50 quid, that cost me getting it marks out. Ah! <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, what about the Queen? When he takes her, God forbid. I mean, when she dies, where's she going to live? I mean, she wouldn't want to live next door to the likes of Ken Livingston or Arthur Scarborough. <laughs> or you. Nah, of course, it wouldn't be heaven with them up there, would it? No, but, I mean, where is she going to be? Will she have her own palace up there or will she have to live with God? What, you mean like a grace and favour house? Well, it won't be a two-up, two-down outside oh, toilet, will it? <laughs> you don't really believe all this fairy story stuff, do you, about heaven and hell? Everybody believes in it. I don't. Well, it don't matter what you believe in. Archbishop of Canterbury believes in it. He goes to church, doesn't he? What's well, his job? No, I imagine the Queen believes in it, and uh, Mrs. Thatcher, she believes in it, and even Neil Kinnock, he believes in it. He's atheist. He goes to church. It's PR, it's PR. He just pays it lip service. Does he don't think he's going to come right out with it and say he's an atheist in a Christian country? You still expect to be Prime Minister, do you? He's not daft. He wants his votes. I expect he's willing to say he's anything to get those. He'd even say he was a socialist. <laughs> well, it don't matter about Neil Kinnock. He don't count him in his Church of Wales, isn't he? <laughs> no, I mean, look, Harold Wilson always got his church, doesn't he? He sits right in the front. He does wherever he wants to see him. Well, you think he's going to heaven? Well, he might. Had to change his tune a bit first. God would probably say, all right, Harold, you can come in, but don't want none of your bloody socialism up here, mate. <laughs> It's like a democracy. We don't have no elections up here. We had enough of that with bloody Lucifer with his secret ballots and his militant tendency. I told him, I said, look, I said, up here, mate, everyone is equal. Under me, I'm in charge. So you can forget about your glasnost and your perish striker. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll find yourself relegated, my son. Yeah, well, see, it's probably just the journey up there to heaven after that worries most of us. Journey? Well, I mean, there's bound to be a lot of travelling. I mean, from all that you can gather, it's not just round the corner, is it? I mean, see... Oh, oh. It's not just the dying off, it's me. How'd you get up there? Where'd you go in? A box. Well, there you are. I mean, it's not the best way to travel, is it? Well, that's nothing. I mean, that's only the first stage, isn't it? Yeah, but, I mean, it, what if you've got claustrophobia, Sonny? It don't matter, do it? I mean, you've gone. Yeah, but how do you...? Well, they wouldn't bury if you have them, would they? No, but uh, you could be in a trance or something. 
Look, the doctor, the undertakers, they all know. Yes, but do they, Arthur? I mean, well, they know that you're not yourself. They know there's something gone wrong, but none of them's ever been dead. They've got no experience of how you're supposed to get up the hill or what the Lord expects. I mean, you could be wandering about in limbo for all eternity because some fool down here has sodded it up for you. I mean, the Lord, he could be calling to you and you can't get out and go to him because they've screwed you down in a bloody box. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be all right. They can't leave you lying on your bed or sitting up in a chair forever, can they? Might be a bit safe if they did. They're inclined to get you down a bit too quick these days, you ask me, Arthur. Oh, you'll be the first one to complain if they had dead bodies lying all over the place. Don't worry. If we was doing it wrong, we would have been notified. Now, you believe you're going up there, don't you? Yeah. And you believe that he can get you up there? Yeah. Well, if he can get people up there, you can get them down again. What was the message like? What, saying you ain't been packed right? <laughs> Wish we knew more about it, though. About what? Well, about that, about the travelling, about how you expected to get up there, you know, and what do you take with you? For the journey, like, I mean, now, how long is it? Are you, do you have to stop over anywhere? And what clothes and, and, and some means of identification let people know who you are, like a, a passport, something like that, and, you know, let them know you're English. And visas, things like I mean, a lot of people, see, they don't travel well off. I mean, for instance, um, for instance, I mean, a lot of people are very nervous about flying. Well, well, there you are, I mean, it's a worry, isn't it? I mean, what vehicle? See, it's... It, it, it's the unknown, Arthur. I mean, I'd be off tomorrow if I thought, you know... If you could go by train. <laughs> well, you can't. You see, that's my point. You, you can't go by train. Can't go by British Rail, that's for sure. <laughs> you would be all eternity if you went by British Rail. <laughs> nor boat, nor car. Otherwise, you, you could stay in a funeral car, go all the way in that, and then they wouldn't have to drop you off into... A hole in the ground. <laughs> but, you see... There's nothing in the scriptures, Arthur. There's no indication of how you're expected to get up there. Oh, well, yes, there is. An angel. An angel of the Lord will come down and carry you up. <laughs> angel of the Lord or not, I wouldn't fancy flying on the back of one of them down at Bournemouth, let alone off <laughs> uh, in space or something. It would probably be different then. It would probably be like a, a, a caterpillar when it turns into a butterfly. See, it leaves its whole skin behind and then... Well, fly there yourself? Yeah. No, I can't see that off. I can't be expected to start flying, not at my age. You're <laughs> to learn. Besides, you'll be a different thing. No, I don't think I fancy that. I mean, I'm used to what I am now, Arthur. I don't know, I don't want to be another thing, bloody butterfly, Sonny. <laughs> no, no. Guys, yourself. I mean, that's obvious, isn't it? Otherwise, nobody would recognise you. Nobody would know who you was. Anyway, I mean, if you was a butterfly, I mean, somebody would come along and wallop. That's it. It's, that's all your years and eternity up to spare, isn't it? We could go together. What? Suicide pact. I mean, we've always got on. Uh, and what we got down here that's so special that's worth living for. Well, uh, oh, I've got, I got this new hip, haven't I? I've <laughs> got a bit in the post office, man. I'd be daft to leave that behind. I wouldn't want to do that, would I? Besides, it's a sin. What? they take your own life. It's a crime, even. Yeah, but they can't do nothing. They can if they catch you and put you in prison. <laughs> well, if they catch you, how can they catch us? We'll be gone. Yeah, but, I mean, if, if you fail or something, like, attempted suicide, I mean, I mean, that... That put you inside for that. I, I don't want to do time, not at my age. Look, if all you're worried about is getting caught, you go first. Hey? Look, I'll do it to you and make sure you're good and gone. And when you're safely on your way, I'll do it to myself. That's murder! <laughs> well, I suppose it's a technicality, really. I mean, neither of us will be there to argue it with them. I don't think I fancy that. I mean, you might change your mind. I mean, I've got no guarantee, have I? <laughs> all right, then. 
I'll go first, you do it to me. Oh, yeah, and I'm the one who gets strung up. They don't do that now. Now, <laughs> yeah, my bloody rotten luck is to bring a bill in through Parliament when I'm coming up for trial. No, thank you very much. <laughs> Look, we'll go together. Hand in hand, off one of the bridges into the river. I can't swim. <laughs> well? Well, I don't fancy drowning. You got a gas stove? You can't get two heads in that. <laughs> and besides, I know this is my gas bill you want to use. <laughs> Heaven elf. Perfect utopia. Paradise. Gord awaiting with open arms. Your host for all eternity. Patience, Arthur, patience. He'll call us when he's ready. You don't want to go pushing up front, you know. You wait and wait your turn. I mean, there's others who, who might need to be up there more than us. So I mean, it's different for you. you you're more upset about things than I am. Well, you're more miserable than I am, for a start off. <laughs> well, you've got that awful wife of yours. I mean, I don't think he would look at that as a sin. Not if you took your own life. Not with a wife like that. <laughs> they say this stuff can kill you. If you drink enough of it. <laughs> Blimey, look at the time. Where's she got to? She can't still be working, not at this hour. So the bloody well right if I did do away with myself. He's gone out and left the light off. I told him, leave the light on in the hall, I said. Oh, it's like talking to a child, he is. Oh, oh, oh I thought you'd gone out. <laughs> Wake up! I bought you some dinner home and it's still hot. Oh, look. Lamb chops, new potatoes. Oh, they live well up there. <laughs> Take some home for you and Mr. Garnet, they said. I've got spotted dick with custard, too. <laughs> oh, come on. Wake up or it'll get cold. Oh. Oh, it's lovely. Here. They gave me some cans of beer for you, too. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, it's lovely. Here. Best end these chaps are. for you. <laughs> In case you didn't have enough. 